Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Zed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be looking at Amazing Spider-Man issue 129, the very first appearance of The Punisher. But uh, off the bat, I'd like to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you hit the bell icon, what happens is it mitigates the Kayfabe effect because you get uh, made aware of the videos as they are listed live so that you can see what we're talking about. If you dig what we're talking about, you're the first one to go to Amazon, eBay, or your comic shop to uh, scoop up whatever comics we're talking about. And uh, we're today we're talking about the first appearance of The Punisher. Uh, one other thing, though, uh, if you let the video play to the end, it gooses the algorithm uh, on YouTube, pushes the video content out to comic book loving YouTube viewers who have not uh, seen cartoonist kayfabe material. And we've been growing the numbers for the channel in a big way recently, and it is due to the kayfabe audience out there who uh, help push that the videos out to uh, other people. So, Jimmy, first appearance of Punisher is yes. what we're going to be looking at here today. Ed, first time I read this comic. Yeah. I, I liked the Punisher a lot as a kid. There were three or four monthly Punisher books when I was reading, but I, for some reason, had never read this, and wow, am I impressed. You, yeah. you know, a lot of first appearances, characters end up being very different as they get popular. They're not totally formed. Maybe they're just in a cameo. This is Punisher. This feels like Punisher has been a character for years in this appearance. And um, Ross Andrew, great on art. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, f there's a story about this exact issue that I got into my possession. You know, this ain't no second print. This is an OG cover list. Ladies and gentlemen, Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Jimmy and I draw. He's got a big one coming up in March. Uh, Hulk, Grand Design Monster. April Hulk Grand Design Madness. We're talking 40 page issues of uh, high octane Incredible Hulk action, giving you the entire history of the Incredible Hulk, distilling down 400 issues of material into these 40 page bits. Jimmy put it all on the line here with this comic, man. Uh, there is bombast, there is visual excitement on every single page. You got to get your hands on it. Several. Uh, variant covers to to go along with uh, these issues. Here's the Marcos Martin. Jeff Darrow did this one for the Madness issue. Peach Momoko. There's the Eddie P variant. Uh, but March is Cartoonist Kayfabe Month in the comic shops. I have uh, Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, coming out uh, on the stands March 9th. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room. And every issue is completely self-contained. These are the variant covers to go along with that. But a rising tide raises all ships. So we have uh, lots of books in print in our bibliographies that you can get your hands on. And we like seeing those Amazon numbers increase. So Jimmy has The Plain Janes, giant young, young adult manga available in finer comic shops. And Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive is out there in the wild. As per my bibliography, Red Room, the Anti-Social Network, was last year's comic. WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker, four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree comics out there. Two box sets, man, finally back in print. Get your hands on those if you haven't got them already. And uh, the grand design that started the moth, man. X-Men Grand Design, three volumes of that, or a hard-to-find omnibus is out there in the wild. Get these comics while they're hot. It keeps the lights on in the kayfabe offices, and it makes it possible for us to continue giving you daily video content. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. So what happened was, man, I had this cousin uh, come to the crib, and he was a part of either a traveling uh, football or basketball league, and came over to the crib, uh, doing fundraiser shit, you know, like, here's a menu, order some baked ziti, give me $20, like, I'll bring you the baked ziti, you know, in two weeks or something, and I look at this, I'm like, dude, here, let me just give you some loot, because this is all shit, and, like, probably has sodium, and, so, like, gonna give me a heart attack, I don't want to eat any of this crap, if you want to order some of it for yourself, take it, but here's some loot, uh, Hip Hop Family Tree Volume 1 comes out, got the yellow pages and all that stuff and uh it's fresh and you know when you get a new book and then you carry it around like it's your newborn you know <laughs> so i'm just like looking at it he's checking it out and he's like oh you know what my dad like he went to uh, grandma's house um he went to grandma's house and, and and grabbed a box of his old comics and all those comics have like yellowish paper just like your hip-hop family tree stuff and i'm like 
motherfucker, let me buy those. <laughs> Let me fundraise your thing. Let, let me let me buy those comics off of you, man. We go right over to his house. Uh, because they just live five doors up the street. His dad fucking knows I'm a comic head. You know what I'm saying? Um, five doors up the street. There's a nice, you know, like a mover's box full of comics that were my uncle's comics as a kid. And you know how when you see somebody's collection, you could kind of psychologically profile them a little bit. Very butch. <laughs> uh, a lot of Joe Kubert. Uh, Sergeant Rocks, uh, Blazing Combats, some War and Horrors. Uh, there was there was a couple Fourth World joints in there. There was Barry Wizard Smith Conan's. Yes. All kinds of tough guy comics. Really no superhero comics except this one, probably on a strength of the guy with the gun on the cover with the crosshairs. Yes, that makes total sense, Ed. <laughs> but it, it, uh, the first appearance of Punisher comic was in that mix. That makes me laugh about the yellow paper because, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, when all the stores dumped their back issues, you would see, like, long boxes that were, you know, three for a dollar, a quarter bucks. And I, I would always tell people, it's like, you look at the top and you just go to the yellow pieces. That's it. That's <laughs> it, man. You do not need uh, any new issues of Marvel Zombies. Like, just go go to that old stuff, man. It seems to be that's how, that's how our digging goes. Um, first time reading this for myself as well. Jerry Conway uh, on the script duties. And this is a perfectly serviceable, tongue-in-cheek Spider-Man comic. It's got it all there. It has all of those uh, hallmarks of every issue, somebody's first issue. I had a pleasure reading it. It had all the bits that you need in there, man. And it's it's uh, it's very corporate in that way because you get all the Spider-Man stuff that you that you would want. You get your little bit of love interest pieces. You got to get your your superhero dramas. You got to get your J. Jonah Jameson stuff. It's all in here. And uh, speaking about your your Ross Andrew um, work, there's a lot uh, to it that made me feel like uh, he's from the Kniff school mm -hmm. of uh, comic book making, if not straight up George Wonder with some of the drapery that's done. Uh, I do wonder if that's uh, Ross Andrew or if it's Frank Giacuia who's bringing those marks to the uh, comic, but it's something I noticed and we'll see it more when we see Pete and his bomber jacket and stuff and one of the things that i liked about it and it's on display here on this two-page spread the figures look really cool that punisher looks great but you're going to see spider-man like upside down and swinging around in action um it's just cool like as you're looking through it it's exciting i love the i love these just drawn comic book buildings yes i do too you know like i love this far more than you know tracing tracing new york city skylines or whatnot and Spider-Man is such a wealth of artists that have drawn him. You know, I think it's underrated a little bit just how many good artists have, have worked on Spider-Man. Because, you know, like you go Ditko, Ramita, Gil Kane. <laughs> Ross Andrews, terrific. It, what is interesting, though, is that, like, Ditko is, to, for me, gold standard. Mm -hmm. And then you get your cutesy John Ramita stuff that comes after and then this is the xerox of the xerox of the john ramita you know like it's quirkier than john ramita quirky is a good word because like i look at this panel and i just i'm delighted by it yeah. i absolutely love it it's such an unusual choice it's damn near the and, and quirky is a good one yeah it's damn near the backsheet cartoon and then uh rarely do you get like a silent bit but it's it's a perfect use of a silent panel there you know it's good storytelling just one two it almost feels like the how to draw comics the marvel way in that you're not getting any like straight on kind of images oh no that was the rule like even at the cubert school when, when they're like you know tape your stuff down for your perspective you do not tape your page down straight up and down always just mm -hmm. tilt that image area a little bit man you don't want straight up parallels all right, you ready? You re you ready for the uh, the the melodrama? You ready for the pantomime? Well, you got to get through the ads first. <laughs> All right, here it goes. <laughs> hey guys, hamburger. This He's is uh, dark times for Parker, right? This is after Gwen Stacy's death and uh, Osborne's death. Like this is a heavy time in the uh, Spider-Man history. Do you see the Kniff kind totally. of marks on that bomber jacket? Yeah, it's very heavy, uh, kind of a heavy-handed for that that brushing stuff. You know, something that we would see so many thin lines in, in a lot of the work we look at, not so back then. This is this is cheap printing, and it is a heavy black line. Yeah. Even the gun is kayfabe, and I like it. Like, make everything kayfabe in, in, in your comics. Why not? Yeah, it reads. 
And that's uh, that's Betty Betty Brandt. So yeah, inviting him to a party, trying to uh, trying to appeal to him, but he's in a dark place. A lot of pathos on our Peter Parker. I have the following issue that does have the Spider Mobile, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't even realize that was a real thing, like in the comics. It was in the uh, Sean Howe Marvel Untold Stories book, because I believe pretty soon the Mego figures are going to be coming out or something, and uh, the Batmobile, pretty hot pro property. We need a Spider-Man car, and the creatives at Marvel are like. He fucking swings from webs right. from building to building. There doesn't need to be a Spider-Man car, but like, you know, whoever owned, maybe it's even uh, Martin Goodman at the time, is like, no, like, we we need to sell some toys. You gotta have the cars. And I, and I think they introduce it, they show it, they give you a good money shot, and it is a toy that you could buy, and they destroy it that same issue. <laughs> How great is all of this? That's a giant, the half page splash in the middle looks awesome. His spider sense looks good. The sights, you know, looking through the scope is is an iconic kind of uh, approach to that. You know what those cars, I would have them as like matchboxes. Mm -hmm. they, they would all do that too. So it's like, you're selling this to seven year old boys. Totally. Of course, selling the matchbox, selling the, the deluxe car. <laughs> and look at this man, Punisher has gimmick guns. <laughs> Stash. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that Cartoonist Kayfabe is a comic book universe. So this is the same chimneys that like Flat Top was going in to collect his honey. Makes sense, yeah. But Boy, in this that's one, a haircut. And speaking of the, the Cartoonist Kayfabe universe, Johan Peterson's Nash. This panel <laughs> is like 100% Nash. Yeah, that widow's peak, man. Straight up from the Eddie Munster School of Haircut Design. <laughs> But there's Carrie and I think is who that is. And is is this a costume? Because I love the idea of this guy just trolling the rooftops of New York City in a green outfit with some ears. Yeah, I have no idea. He's a weird one. Or is he a monster? I couldn't tell you, Ed. I just don't know that character, but definitely a strange piece in this <laughs> in this three-way dance that we're watching. Interesting period of time because because Wolverine is introduced around this time, also a John Romita mm -hmm. creation, so is Punisher. And was it like a mandate? You know, like John Romita, he's a good soldier, he's art director, all that kind of thing. Like, uh, we need some new characters. Uh, I loved our Walt Simonson shoot interview piece when Walt was talking about just like reshuffling existing bits to try to like create different permutations that, that might work. Uh, but you do got to add some new stuff here and there. And there weren't many new characters uh, created in the 70s. Punisher and, and Wolvie, they stuck. Yeah, those are the two. I used to like that Marvel would do this. They would plug yeah. their other books like in a, in a couple of words there at the bottom. Monster of Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so good. Beautiful storytelling. I mean, clearly Marvel method, uh, visually told stories. Dude, the wrinkles in this mask, like... That's a Lucho mask. Like when it comes off, you see those wrinkles yeah. on on the Lucho on the Lucho doors. Yeah, what an odd detail to put in there. You know that your mask was damaged in this fight, and now Parker's looking at it. Check this out, dude. Yes, a, a fan letter from Ralph Macchio, and he's talking about don't you dare take Gil Kane off of Spider Man. And then he's talking about how much he dislikes werewolves, but Gil Kane drew drew a werewolf that was a ferocious and not ridiculous. And then uh, is just continuing to go with his uh, sort of fanboyisms, man. Bring back more Hammerhead. Bring back more Doc Ock. That's pretty good. And uh, I would always be confused when I'd see him as an editor. Yeah. And think like, is this the Karate Kid dude? Did he leave acting? That but was you know what, man? You look at a letter, it actually could be the actor. <laughs> <laughs> Little six-year-old Ralph Macchio. I don't know where he's from. Is he a Jersey boy? Yeah, those letters pages are full of gold. Yeah, they really are. The amount of business they did on ad cells. You know, like you see the big page here and there or a spread, but then you see those pages where it's like there's 30 ads on that page. Totally. Totally. And then and then you look at those in a certain way, man, and you'll find um you'll find stuff for uh Gary Groth Fantagraphics when when he was a kid and and stuff like a, a lot of history in those ads. The other thing I loved reading this book is the period element. Yeah. You know, like seeing Mary Jane's outfit and stuff, but just like thinking like this is this is totally a 70s period piece now, you know, when you look back and read on it, it's kind of kind of fun. 
<laughs> like a little Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> Mary Jane's kind of neat as a character here. This, you know, these just, this is an era of comics I just didn't, have not read very many of. So I kind of appreciate going back and, and seeing those bits. Yeah, I don't know what that Jackal character is. Oh, Jackal, that's what he is. Um, this is an iconic image. Like, I think, I think it was in the, uh, the Abrams book highlighting the... You Origin know, of the Punisher. You talk about kayfabe and like guns and buildings and stuff. Like this is kayfabe human figure. Look how simple that leg and shoe are. It works so great. It really but does. Nobody would draw it that way now. If if you uh, like, you just connect the cylinders properly. Like it's all like all of this. Like he sort of knows the exact basic shapes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm getting a lot of instruction from that. Some of the next comics that I want to make after Red Room, like I got to really start to figure out how to draw bodies in a lot of different angles and stuff. And they're not all going to be referenced uh, all the time. So I have to really nail down the cylinders and how everything connects. One of the big bits that I really have to, figure out and actually russ andrew does not have it figured out here himself is just the independent trunk hip pivot mm -hmm. like almost everybody and and russ russ andrew does do it here just draws both straight up and down like like it's like one unit and the best of artwork the best of figure drawing has movement in the trunk and the hips look at john busima like they, they're, they're, those two are the hips and the shoulders are never aligned yeah. in John Buscema, you know, and they always look like a guy's coming forward, lunging, moving. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's the part that I'm really trying to nail down in my sketchbooks. I take about an hour a day do, doing um, figure drawing and things to just try to get some sway in those hips, uh, try to figure out how to properly um, get weight across. Like, see, this is a good example. You know, that trunk is coming forward and those hips are coming back. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about this, DeLuca? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And the story uh, for anybody that, that wants that part is basically Jekyll sold out Punisher. He, uh, he, he planted a gun that was this gun maker's address, and that's what uh, brings Spider-Man and Punisher here, and, and then the cops. And Jackal killed the guy that made the guns. Yeah, let's just uh, speak for a couple minutes about, about the Punisher character. He's not a snidely whiplash villain. Like, he believes uh, he kind of is the punisher character in in certain ways there's hyperbole to the character they're figuring that part out he's a little more talkative than you would imagine punisher to be but uh he's a marine he's a former marine he thinks he's on the side of good uh at this point it's unknown if spider-man killed gwen stacy and and green, Go green goblin so so in the draconian old testament mindset of the punisher spider-man committed evil and needs to be taken out yeah punisher kills murderers and spider-man at this point is publicly viewed as a murderer yes which i guess is is justification for parker to be kind of morose <laughs> i'm i'm telling you man i'm doing more of this in my comics you know, less less like agonizing over the reference on buildings and stuff because this is just perfect. We looked at that Darwin Cook Spider Man, yeah, and and made similar comments. Mm -hmm. You know that it's like it's not that lavish inking in, in the final pieces, but it's like really getting the parts that are important on the page. And you see it in this too. It's a different, slightly different approach, but it's the same kind of deal. It's heavier lines. It's a little bit less of the fine detail, but it reads. And if you do this, you might be able to do a comic a month. You know. And it it gets everything across. It's pretty sick. I kind of like the Punisher skull. Uh, this this version of it too. It's whole, very simple, but taking it, up the whole shirt. Yeah, it's it looks good. I feel like my my little niece would draw the spider webs like that, man. <laughs> I, that that might be that might be this hunt character uh, doing the inking on that because that seems very uh, yeah. Anyhow, this is so far removed from the Spider-Man, you know, like McFarlane was doing Spider-Man when I start reading comics. Right. So it's a very different mask and eyes. And whenever I see these older, this older Spider-Man design, I kind of fall in love with it mm. all over. You know, the, the, the very different approach to the Spider-Man eyes and the expressiveness of that face. It's a genius costume in so many ways. Uh, a big function of the costume of like Spider-Man. Uh, Superman wearing the tights and stuff like, like you know the 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 tidy whities is 
to just give us that cylinder on that body, man, because we're dealing with like right. this like two D surface, and you want to communicate volume. But if you do the webs right, <laughs> like you, it's it's just a wireframe of a human of of the full form, and it really sells that three D. Are you are you laughing at his temper tantrum? No, 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 no. I'm 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 agreeing with you on the the on wireframe. The, yes. Almost like the old Art Institute of Pittsburgh, like that that CG finger <laughs> going back and forth on the commercial. The Vry Institute. That's some time ago. <laughs> Are you good to go? Yeah, I am, yeah. All right, Kayfabers. This is the first uh, appearance of Punisher. Probably not the last Punisher comic we'll be taking a look at on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What is out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design coming to comic book shops in March and April. Tell your local comic shop to uh, to reserve a copy for you, to pre-order a copy. There are several covers to choose from. I recommend all of them. Yes. Um, and you can join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug to, uh, to see how I make the comics I make, to look at some of my original art, and to see some of the behind-the-scenes process behind Hulk Grand Design. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one, coming out March 9th. Uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis for four months. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics, and every issue is completely self-contained. I'm serializing these comics on my Patreon ahead of time. We're already into issue three of Trigger Warnings on the Patreon. More than 200 pages worth of stuff. New strips every Tuesday for the price of $3 for all of it. You could get to the pre-ordered links and the Patreon links, uh, plus more, at my link tree in the description below this video. What else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below the video, and you can pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, give them those marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.